It's exciting for all of us to get a brand new reptile, but what happens in the weeks after? What happens if you're not so excited? These are the top five reptiles I kind of regret getting. My name's Adam, this is Tilly. You're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. Realistically, I don't regret getting any reptiles. Regret, meaning that I wish I hadn't done it. These are just the ones that once I got them, they weren't what I thought, and I think maybe there's better pets for me, and you might fall into the same boat. So I wanna share my experience with you because maybe this might influence you to get something different, realizing I don't really want what I think that I want. So let's start it off with number five, turtles. I'm talking about aquatic turtles and generally big turtles. I'm talking about not huge, but yellow belly sliders, things like that. Generally because they are big, they take a lot of space. Most people try to keep them in something smaller than they actually belong in. I'm not gonna to go too much into detail. There's a video right here all about how uh, I had to redo my floor and drywall because my enclosure uh, leaked, my aquarium leaked. Now, if you wanna get a stock tank, then you're going to mitigate this, but everybody knows a stock tank in your living room does not look as good as an aquarium. So if you're looking for a showpiece for your turtles, I'd recommend something smaller, maybe a musk turtle, or maybe you don't want anything like that at all and you want a box turtle, because box turtles are not aquatic. So if you want a turtle, get something that's an appropriate size, get something that doesn't need tons and tons of space, unless that's what you want. Because there are guys out there, you know, the Dan the Turtle Man, for example, Garden State Tortoise. There are people who love to dedicate their lives to turtles and tortoises and aquatic turtles being part of that. And that's fine. I think those people are the right people to have those type of turtles. It's just, I'm not the right person. And if you're thinking, oh, I want a ruddier slider because it's cute and I can keep it in a 40 gallon. And no, 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 no. You need something huge. You need a big filtration system. It takes a lot of maintenance. No, it's just not really the right one for you. If you are, hey, I like, you know, saltwater aquariums and dedicating my whole life to water, then yeah, they're not saltwater turtles. Just making the comparison because those things take a lot of work also. Number four, my Saharan Euromastics. Now, it wasn't even the species, I don't think. It was the individual. And we're gonna get to animals that fit into categories in a sec. I got a Saharan Euromastix. I love Euromastix, I think they're amazing. They're from parts of uh, Egypt and like the Saharan desert, like that area of the world, right? Now, Egyptians are the big boys, Saharans are much smaller. So I thought for me, I'm gonna get a Saharan Euromastix. You know, they're not gonna be, so they sometimes will tail whip you. That's their defense. You don't have to really worry about being bitten by them as much. And their diet's pretty cool. They're gonna eat things like lentils and greens and they're herbivores, right? So I thought it was a really interesting species to keep but you still need a pretty big enclosure. And then you need very strong UVB because this is a desert, a true desert species. And you also need a very hot basking spot. So all of those things are fine. I have a bearded dragon. I have an Aki monitor. That's fine. But this animal just didn't really want to be touched. This is an animal that would sit and bask and then go to the one side of the enclosure and then go back to bask and then sometimes would eat its food. It was just kind of boring for me where my Aki monitor is running all over the place and you can throw crickets in and they go crazy. Same with my bearded dragon, Tilly the Frilly. This is a frill dragon, by the way. They're just super chill when you want them to be, but then they're active and fun and you can handle them. And this animal wasn't that. Now this isn't for all Euromastics. Some Euromastics are great. Just in my experience with one, I just think that if you're going to get an animal, this is an ode to get it as a baby you can raise up the way you want because this animal is already four or five years old or get an animal that is, you know, like Tilly. When I got Tilly, I knew what I was getting. This is an animal that's five plus years old and she's just chill. She's super cool. I knew that going into it. I'm happy to have her. If it was a frill dragon that was, oh, it frills up at you and tries to bite you, I wouldn't have got that animal. Number three, Indian ringneck. Okay, this is not technically a reptile, although birds are reptiles. Okay, this is a bird. I've never done this before. I usually do amphibians. I'll keep this one short. In 2019, I had uh, birds. I had a budgie or two budgies and a zebra finch. And just those were pretty cool. Like they'd sit on my finger. They wouldn't really talk that much. They make noise and they were cute and they were fun and easy and they didn't really stink that bad. So I'm like, okay, I want something a little bit bigger, more showy, fun. That might be able to talk a bit, has more personality, that sort of thing. Then I can come down and it's gonna sit on my shoulder and just be chill. Uh, this bird was not that. This bird was none of those things. And I realized after, although I had some input saying, oh yeah, Indian ringneck's the one for you. Nope, this is not the right species for me. Beautiful bird, blue Zazu. I did a video, here's some old footage. I should have researched more. Like I thought I did enough and I really didn't. And since this incident, I've always thought, okay, do more research from more sources and talk to more people. And I just think that I could have, it was my own fault. I could have done better. Now with that said, it was a cool experience and it made me realize I don't want other birds because I was thinking maybe I want an African gray or a cockatoo. And I'm not really a bird guy. I mean, once the budgies passed, 
it just, uh, that was it for me. They're really old, by the way. They just didn't just croak. And I'm no longer a bird guy. So I realized that, and I did give this animal to uh, actually a veterinarian technician. So someone who knows, who specializes in birds. And this animal went to a really great home. So I know that when you get a bird, it's a lifelong commitment. But if you're not able to give the bird the right circumstances and there's someone better for the job, I think that you should rehome. And the issue basically was it just screamed all the time. It was impossible to film videos. I wanted to bite you. It wanted nothing to do with being handled. It just, this was not a bird that I wanted. So yeah, birds. I'm not, I'm not a bird. I'm not a bird guy. Number two, uh, this is a category, wild caught animal. So I don't think that this is always wrong and I don't regret all of them that I've gotten. However, some of the wild caught that I've got, and we made a whole video you can watch right here about the ones that I should have done more. So for example, I still have some wild caught animals. I've got emerald tree boas that have a vet appointment. So I'm taking fecals in the whole thing. I've got uh, sand geckos, which are doing great. A few of them did die, but I mean, when you get wild caught animals, sometimes that's going to happen. And that's the issue is that just to say something like when you get animals, sometimes they die is sad. And if you're not into this, into this, you're kind of newer it sounds ridiculous and sounds harsh, but at the end of the day, part of owning lots of reptiles, especially ones that are wild caught, is there are going to be casualties sometimes because like humans, these animals can have cancers and other ailments and they don't really show them. So with wild caught animals, that's exacerbated because they usually come in with a parasite load or stress or dehydration. And sometimes they're just too far gone. So the two examples that I use in the video I made all about wild caught were A, my leaf tail gecko with my Fimbriatus, which I am so devastated about because I actually really love this animal. Like. All these animals I have love for, for sure. But this was up in my living room. I got to see her every day. It was a pleasure to own this animal. Unfortunately, wild caught from Madagascar, very long trip, came in very dehydrated. I thought I did a good enough job rehydrating. And then I literally shot B-roll in the morning. And then at night she was gone and she seemed fine. And that's just, they can go like that, which is unfortunate. The other example, again, from Madagascar was my carpet chameleon, Violet. And I love this animal too. And just one day she just was no longer. And it seems like they're fine. And even someone who myself, I'm not gonna say I'm like Dr. Doolittle or anything, but I can read these the behavior of a lot of these animals pretty well. I know what to look for, sunken in eyes, the, flat, the tail folding it, things like I understand what to look for, but both of them looked decent or on the mend recovering from the import and it, they just didn't make it. So I kind of regret not getting the animals, but not doing enough. I should have brought them to a vet immediately anyway. And I think that that's something that when I'm wrong about something or if I tout something in these videos and I'm wrong, I think that if you get wild caught animals, you should bring them to a vet. I think that although in past videos I've said, you know, don't bring any reptiles to the vet until they look sick. I think if it's a captive bred, I still stand behind this. If it's a wild caught, it might be best to bring them to a vet immediately, get a fecal, get them to look at them. And an exotic vet, of course, don't bring it to a dog and cat vet. They probably know less than you about reptiles. So number one, one, angry stuff. So I'll give you examples. What I mean is with angry stuff, snakes are not, and animals in general, are not aggressive, they're defensive. This is a general rule, there are exceptions, of course. However, animals that are defensive, who are very scared and they lash out to bite or tail up or whatever first, sometimes you can tame them down. A lot of the times you can tame them down. And when I was really new into reptiles, or not new, but had a much smaller collection, I could put more time into these animals that take way more time. For example, I've got all these reptiles, I got a bunch of them, but I have a staff to help me and my fiance helps me and I just have help now to take care of all of these. Back in the day, I didn't. So when I had a small collection, I could bring in, say, something as simple as a corn snake. Oh, this thing is a, the devil that wants to kill you. And then I could make it not that by just handling it, being confident, the whole thing. And they tame down easy. But not all species are like that. And then when you get a substantial collection and then your life gets busier, oftentimes it's more difficult. For example, I was left a boa back in the day. This boa was not happy and you do not want to be on the business end of a boa constrictor to quote Brian Barchuk from a hundred years ago in those videos. And it's true and the bite sucked and it didn't feel good and trying to tame this thing down was very difficult. And all in all, this animal I eventually rehomed for a breeding project because it just wasn't suitable to be a pet or at least I wasn't capable of making this animal pet worthy. So I didn't want to sell it to somebody who, oh yeah, it's good. Yeah, just bring it around your kids. Don't do that. And I think that with a lot of the animals that I have now, I have to enlist help. My Maclats Python is another great example where thanks all Canadian reptile girl for giving me this animal. Love it. Beautiful. But her name is Pittsburgh, his name, but Pittsburgh 
wants to bite everything and it's just defensive. It's not aggressive. It doesn't want to hurt you. It just doesn't want to get hurt. And even we did a live stream last night as the day of filming this and it was striking at everything. So I love this animal. I just think that for me, because I have a staff, it's different, but on my own, I don't like angry animals that I have to rehabilitate because I just don't have the time. I'd rather spend the time interacting with the animals that already are great and I can just pick them up and handle them and it's just not very stressful, but that's a difference of personality. Maybe you're somebody who likes cantankerous animals. Maybe you're the guy who goes horseback riding and says, give me the crazy one. I'm not. Give me the calm one. That's not going to buck me off. That's my personality and that's it. So for you, maybe it's different. Let me know in the comment section below. What reptiles do you regret getting? I'd love to hear from you. And as always, please hit like and subscribe. Really helps the channel. Let me know what you want to see more of. I mean, give me some video ideas. I'd love to make content that you want to see. As always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, discounts. I did some one-on-ones last week, which were so much fun. You get to talk one-on-one -on -one with me over Zoom or Skype or wherever you want to do it. All that for as little as a dollar a month. And I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. So I'll see you in the next one.